Hello fellow techies, it's Jade here. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how you can build a dev container Docker file so that you can then use it in your pipelines to build workflows. So in today's video, we're just going to be doing the building and pushing to a GitHub container registry. Let's get started. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can you take a dev container Docker file and then run that in the pipeline. So this is really useful because just say you have installed Azure CLI and Terraform, you can then see that actually runs successfully in a pipeline. So here we have that Docker file, which I showed you in the previous video, and it's a .NET image, which then installs Terraform and installs Azure CLI, and it installs a specific version of each of these. Then what we can do is we can have a .github folder, and this is a workflows folder, basically. So any workflows that are run in a pipeline would go into this workflows folder. And then you can see here that I've created two YAML files. Today, we're going to be going through the build push dev container YAML file. And so what these then translate to is they translate to a action that is done within the pipeline. So each of these is a workflow and they are actions that are then run for that repository. So if we just go into here, I'll show you quickly how that translates. So you can see here, you've got this build and push dev container. And there's a lot of steps that are then run as part of this. So you've got the like checking out the repository, you then build the Docker image, you log into the container registry, we build and push the Docker image, and then it completes the job. And so let's have a look at what the code is actually doing here. I just wanted to show you where you would find the actual workflow running. And yeah, let me go to the actual code here. So if we go to the GitHub and the here, we'll go through what each step is doing. So first of all, we just got our name. This can be anything. I am called it build and push dev container because that's what we're doing. But ideally you want to have a descriptive name so you know what it is that particular workflow is doing. And then you then specify how you're going to trigger that workflow. So here we've got this workflow dispatch, which basically just means that it's a manual trigger. You would have to go into the actions folder and then manually run that workflow, which I'll show you how to do after we've gone through this workflow. You then specify the permissions. This is quite important because you need to give permissions to the GitHub token to specify what it can actually do. So we need to actually be able to write packages. And so in order to do that, we need to specify that it has package write permissions. And we've also given it context read permissions, which means that we can read the, the GitHub token can read the current, current repository. Once you've set the permissions for that, you can then specify the job you want to do. So typically you can have multiple jobs here. We just have one job, but you can have multiple jobs. Say you want to do a build step and then deploy step. That would be a common way to have multiple jobs, but we've just done one single job for this. And we've also specified that we're going to run on Ubuntu latest. This is just a common thing to run on. You can also specify the version, but we just use the default for now. I might actually switch this to be a specified Ubuntu version, actually thinking about it, just because we want to make sure that any upgrades do break our pipeline. We can then check out the repository. So we then check out all the code that is in the repository. So we can then use that code in our pipeline and we then set up the Docker build. So this is basically just saying we're going to make sure that Docker can run as part of this pipeline because we need Docker to run. We need to be able to log into Docker, we need to be able to then build and push our changes to the like registry that we've chosen. And so once we've once we've done our Docker build, we can then log into our GitHub container registry. So if the container registry is, hasn't been created before, it will then create it as well. It's really important that your GitHub token has the appropriate permissions to be able to do that. I said here that you have packages right here. You need to be able to then like write to the packages section of your repository. So if you're the repository owner, so I'm Jade Codes, for example, I need to have write permissions to the packages section of Jade's Codes repository. Jade's Codes GitHub rather than a specific repository. It's just the general GitHub. 
And so you can see here, I'm logging into Docker, I'm logging into the GitHub container registry, and then I'm setting it to be my GitHub repository owner, which is Jade Codes. And then I'm setting the password to be secrets.github token. So this is a inbuilt GitHub token that GitHub provides, which is why here you would then spe specify those permissions. You could create your own GitHub token and pass that in through here if you wanted to. This is just a little bit better because it, it kind of creates it on the fly and you don't need to worry about that GitHub token been stolen or been expired. So I quite like to just use it in here. But obviously, if you were pushing to a different registry that wasn't a part of your current repository, you would then have to specify that token in here rather than using the inbuilt one. And then you can then do a build and a push of a Docker image. So what that again is just a inbuilt option, which is Docker build push action. Again, you can it's much easier to find the different actions for this. I can link them down below actually so you can have a look. But a quick Google will also show you what options are available. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it the context of the dev container folder. And we're going to give it the Docker file to build. So we're just saying that we want to build this Docker file. We want to push to our current repository and we're just going to give it the latest tag because when, what we're going to do is we're just going to use that latest tag in our pipelines. You could then specify specific versions as well. This is really useful if you're doing a lot of changes to your dev container and you don't want to break current functionality in for other people, but we're going to keep it like this for now, just for simplicity's sake. So that's pretty much all there is to it from this side. Once we've had a look at what it does, let's have a look at the actual pipeline. If we go to our build and push dev container pipeline, you will see that there is a, this workflow has a workflow dispatch event trigger, which means that you actually have the ability to run the workflow from here. Whereas if you look at our other pipeline here, there isn't that option there because this doesn't have that trigger. And so what we need to do is we can actually manually run this workflow here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to refresh because it doesn't actually show you the thing running until you refresh it. You can see that it says it's manually run by DJ codes and it's just going to do the actual building of the Docker file and then it's going to push it up. We could also add some logic in here to check whether or not the Docker file has had any changes to the previous one. Like again, these are all just refinements that we can make. I just want to make this a really easy introduction for those who are new to this concept. So we can see that's been completed now. So what we can do is I want to actually show you where this is actually pushing to because we've seen it run and we're like, okay, what does this actually mean? So if you go into J codes here and we go into packages, you should see now that there's a package in here called CICD keyboard sample. So as you can see, this literally just says that it's been published a minute ago, which is because we've just done our run. And if you look at all the managed versions, you can see like these are the different versions that have been published over the last a few weeks. For anyone who doesn't know, I filmed this and then there was an error with the editing, not the editing, but the saving. And so it corrupted, so I'm having to refilm again. Hence the previous ones. So now you can see this is here. We can then take this image that has .NET, Azure CLI, and Terraform inside of it to verify that those are all installed on that Docker file and can be used in our pipeline to run our code that's actually in the repository. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. Appreciate you all. See you next time.